Welcome to the seventh section of the Building Databases with Redis video course. In previous sections, we learned about different data types and the operations on those data types provided by Redis. This section is devoted to Redis features such as transactions and pipelining, and we will start with the first one transactions. In this video, we are going to discuss transactions, which are often critical for application design. First of all, a definition. A transaction is a single unbreakable unit of work performed by a database management system that is not affected by other units of work. In practice, this means that several Redis commands are performed sequentially in an isolated way, such that either all commands are successful or no commands are performed at all. Usually, NoSQL databases don't include transactions in their core functionality and design because they are designed to be extremely fast and scalable compared to classical storage solutions such as a relational database. Redis supports transactions that offer all the necessary features of a transaction in a relational database. Atomicity Transaction is treated as a single unit of work. Preservation of data consistency Isolation Other transactions do not affect the current one. And Durability If a transaction is finished, it is guaranteed that all changes are persistent. Let's move on and get to grips with transactions. First of all, let's create two keys with string values to experiment on by typing set key 110 and set key 2 100. A transaction is a sequence of commands, as we said before. It is started with a multi command which does not accept arguments. Let's type it in the Redis client. The server replies with OK, which means that the transactions has started. When transaction starts, all commands you perform are not executed immediately, but are queued for further execution as a single atomic sequence that we have called a unit of work before at the beginning of this video. Let's perform two sequential incur commands on key 1 and key 2. This time server replies with a queued string instead of 11 and 101 as it would do if we were out of a transaction. Now, before we finish our transaction, let's open another Redis client and check the values on our keys. As you can see, they are still unchanged, though comments were entered via the first Redis client. That is called isolation, and the isolation itself is ensured between two different clients accessing the Redis database by design. All Redis commands on a certain server are executed sequentially, so the second client won't get data changes before the whole list of commands inside the transaction is executed. So far, we have created our first transaction and it's time to execute this queued list of commands. The execution of a transaction is performed using an exec command, which does not accept any arguments. Let's type exec to check the value of the keys. This is very easy because Redis replies with the values that were changed during transaction, basically returning the results of comments that were parts of a transaction. And yes, the values have changed. Another way to finish a transaction is not to execute it, but cancel it, which is done using the discard command. Let's repeat what was done before in a new transaction. Create a transaction with multi and perform two incur commands on our keys, but this time finish the transaction with a discard command, not an exec. The last reply is OK which means that the transaction was successfully discarded. Everything is OK when commands do not fail, but sometimes errors do occur. Talking about transactions, there can be two kinds of errors. Those that happen before the exact command was executed and those that happen after. 
The first type of error is handled by Redis and such an error will lead to the transaction cancellation. The second kind of error, those errors that happen after the exec command call, are not handled by Redis and the execution continues despite the fact that the commands has failed to execute. It can happen if you try to call the rpop command on a key that holds the string value while rpop is only executed on lists. Let's try to make a transaction with this kind of error. As you can see in the example, an error has happened in the first command, but the execution continued and we received replies for both comments inside the transaction. Let's sum up everything from this video. Transactions are treated as single unit of works with properties such as atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. A transaction is either executed as a whole or it does not affect the database except in cases where we call comments with incorrect argument. That's all for transactions. And now we are ready to continue with the related topic which discusses a typical check and set problem and how it is solved using Redis.